Hello everyone, welcome to Sunburn Now Battle Plays uh, Ace Attorney Trilogy PS4 Episode 22. We gotta go down the police station. Which means going to the underground parking lot first, apparently. And then the police department entrance. Okie dokie, let's do it! Phew, we're finally here! Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? Beats me, that took almost 30 minutes by taxi, and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm? Hold on, what's that? Disturbing? Why does it undulate like that? Oh, wait, I know. This is the Blue Badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright, you sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the Blue Badger. Who's that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the Blue Badger. Uh-oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. <laughs> hey, pal, what are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Um, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey, I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. You're yeah, too busy dancing, bruh. I get it. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You'd better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. Why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal, there's plenty of evidence against her. But what if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal, can I speak to you for a second? Huh? Me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister! Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically! Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just, it's a sensitive issue with us these days. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing really. Uh, they kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe? What did you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then, what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with my sister's case and all. It's true. We've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest-ranked people are being led into criminal affairs now. The lowest-ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank-and-file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So, anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall. Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of a crime scene. It's unheard of, pal. Hmm. Um, Detective Gumshoe, what can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey, pal, this is a detective's ID card. You can't just keep that. You have to turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me into so much trouble all the time. Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Hmm, let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. But didn't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa, now I remember! Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. Uh, someone who must have, um... Someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth, what could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Well, then that's pretty much it to uh, that. And we just talked about Bruce Goodman. So this ID card belonged to the victim? He was a detective like myself. 
Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm, don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transfer for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transfer? Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but... Word is that Chief Prosecutor Skye called him out there to the parking lot. And Lana's confessing as much. <laughs> hmm... Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. Were you at the awards ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Ah, congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. But I was proud of Mr. Edgeworth for winning that award even with all the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers? Must be because of the rumors. Well, that's pretty much everything I can present to you. Oh, Edgeworth's troubles, here we go. He's in a tough spot again. Again? Well, it all started with the murder of that defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent! Listen, pal, there have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They're practically shouting. But, but there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. Look, that patrolman is saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. And then I said, hey, you do that, your soup will get cold, buddy. <laughs> That's hilarious, sir. I laughed so hard I cried. I guess he wasn't saluting, he was wiping tears from his eyes. They make a good pair. The detectives in there look pretty busy. Just imagine, right now, behind those doors, a police drama in action. Somehow the thought fails to excite me. Mr. Wright, do you know why patrol cars are painted black and white? No idea, why? Well, I think they're designed after a panda. A panda? Not that I have scientific proof, it's just a theory. Um, do you mind me asking how you came up with that theory? It was when I was on a school trip. I saw a patrol car and it came to me. We had just been at the zoo, see? What about zebras? Or did they not have those at your zoo? Uh, I was wondering about that. What, the dancing blue badger? It's my masterpiece. You made this detective gumshoe? The chief threw together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. N nice work. It's battery powered, so it can go anywhere. There's no switch, so it just dance, dance, dances until the batteries die. Poor blue badger fated to dance until he drops. Blue badger panel added to the court record. Dude, why would that? <laughs> and that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who was what was his name? The guy in the parking lot. That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall? Is he some kind of Wild West sheriff or something? No, Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West LA. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this, and they'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. Detective Gumshoe's letter of introduction, all oh, that's nice. I'll be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there, and nobody will look at you twice, pal. The 
usual wanted posters are hanging up on the bulletin board here. Do you know this face? If you do, dial 911. You know, Mr. Wright, I've always thought it was kind of funny. I've never seen anyone who looked like the people in these posters. They hardly even look human. She has a point. Alright, guess we're going back to the parking lot. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. I'll see you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh, still here? Uh, hello. Oh, why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guard? Oh, she's got hella boyfriends then. Uh, okay. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. There's something I wanted to ask you. The scene of the crime. A cold grave for men who have lost their dreams. And me, I watch over them as they sleep, dreaming of the desert's harsh judgment. He's asleep. Well, should we know this hopeless case something to catch- Should we show this hopeless case something to catch his interest? There's something I wanted to ask you. The scene of the crime. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Um, letter of introduction. Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, fan letters to me go right in the spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe? Ah, that old cow dog. Hmm. He holding a birthday party or something. Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. Ah, I think he just miswrote it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries. This proves it's from Detective Gumshoe better than a blood test. Guess I'd better let you in then. Th thank you, Officer Marshall. Oh, that's right. He's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or higher? Well, folks, the clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hootenanny. Note to self, police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Step to Gumshoe's letter of introduction, crumpled and discarded. Damn. Well, now that I've showed you that, will you uh, talk to me now? Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feisty doggy there now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. This smiling Madonna took told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Starr. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report. Death due to loss of blood, one knife wound, died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. All right, so, yeah, okay. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why he didn't do much work with the Chief Prospector. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here, to this parking lot? So it seems, like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. Um, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Dude, he did it, huh? He did it, didn't he? 
Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason, we're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do, nothing important at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of this cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he don't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation? I didn't read it because I thought it was like something wrong, but yeah. That's fine. What about this? What's that? Some sort of police passport. This is Detective Goodman's ID card, strangely enough. We found it a good distance away from the crime scene. Good distance in this rat hole? If you want distance, get yourself to Texas. Texas? This is a tiny little crime scene in a tiny little town with tiny little evidence. What difference does a few yards make, compadre? Note to self, if you encounter suspicious evidence, think of Texas. There's no better way to study than to hang out with the pros! Oh yeah, okay. Bad uh, evidence there. Ah, a toy shield suits the boy well. What exactly could you shield with that? A toy knight, maybe? Officer Marshall, don't you have anything good to say about Mr. Edgeworth? You don't like him, right? We get the point. You know, when I was a detective, I got one of these. Hmm, let me guess. Did it have a K for King of Detectives on it? Hey, they could use the same shield over and over. Note to self, the prosecutor's office and criminal affairs are surprisingly cheap. You know it. They've gotten cheaper with every passing year, I tell you. 5.12 p.m. The prospector's bright red steed came in at a trot, real slow-like. A trot? My Madonna tells me the crime occurred three minutes later, so it seems the chief prospector was lying in wait, maybe waiting for her prince to ride in on his bright red horse. So what you mean is, the killer intended to use Edward's car all along? Did I already try to show you the knife? Yeah, okay. What if I show you my badge? I see your badge. Looks pretty. Round. Our badge is a star. A lone star, shine, star shining in the nighttime sky. A beam of light illuminating evildoers who come in the dark of night. Note to self, evildoers are weak against starlight. Hey, that's a sheriff's badge. There's nothing else to talk to you about. So, get out of my face. I got more stuff to examine. This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Right, let's check it out. What, what, what's happening? Oh, I wasn't doing that. It was, oh, we were doing like this, oh. Examine the evidence! It's this big thing for no reason. Hello, turn it on, please. Hmm, this phone's still on the redial screen. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright, most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, you never know with people from your generation. Whatever, let's check this phone out. Even his generation, he's my age. Now, to see who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, a defense attorney doesn't think first, he just pushes the button. Hey, that song, I know that! Hey, what's going on over there? Ah, oh, sorry. I see you, partner. 
You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this, anyway? It was on the ground over there. Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ring tunes. Oh, that? Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. Uh, what? Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. A wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh-oh, I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Um... Yeah, that's, that's BS. No, we just called ourselves is what happened. Like, you really didn't see that? How would you, how would you not see that, or notice that? This appears to be the car where the body was found. It looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Quite a luxury car. It just screams, I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. Uh, it doesn't look like that, that luxury is to me, man. It just looks like a red car. R. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. Defense attorneys are relegated to B block. I dream of the day when I will be able to park my car here. I'll go over to B block to buy my hamburgers from you, Mr. Wright. I'm not planning on giving up my job that soon. B block is through there. That's where visitors park. I can see the Lunchland car over there, far in the distance. Hey, you're right. I like the cute design on the door. I can see a cartoon cow munching down on a juicy looking steak. Doesn't that strike you as a little creepy? Just don't think too deeply about it and you'll be fine. Hashtag cannibalism. Well, now what? That's kind of it. talk to him again. Maybe present him with something else that we just found? Oh, Lana Sky, okay. So there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister! That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. And the prospect of tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall? Yeah, Bambina. H how can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? Hmm. I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's a blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will, someone's up to something here, but who? Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence in arranging testimonies, you mean? He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospector Lana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets. Some people load them with deals. What, you're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? Huh. I present you with a cell phone. My sister's cell phone. The last time it was used was 518, right after Goodman was killed. Maybe she was canceling her date for the night. 
Why did Lana make that call? Oh, you don't like the blue badger thing either? Well, that's all we got, man. That's There's nothing else. We're leaving. We can talk to Edgeworth about stuff again. Isn't that... Oh, no, he left? He left. Why is all this stuff re-examinable? Painting, that great cashmere, yeah, 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 I'm guessing it's worth around 5,000 bucks. $5,000? Speaking of which, your suit would be about... That's enough of that. I don't need my life appraised. Thank you very much. Wow, what an amazing bouquet. No kidding, there's a card on it. Back from the dead, Wendy. Wendy, heard that name somewhere before. Giant Steel Samurai. Wow, well, yeah, huh? There's something written on the bottom between a rock and a hard place. Wendy. No. Wendy, old bag. Like, why are we allowed to re-examine this stuff? What is the point? I don't understand why we have to read all the same stuff. What a view! Must be nice to have an office on the 12th floor. Guess you would feel important. Incidentally, were you gonna jump out? Were you to jump out this window, the time until impact within the ground would be approximately 3.23 seconds. Damn, super handy to know. Thank you. Okay, this is the wrong place to be then. Um, back to the detention center, perhaps? Uh, she is not there. There's nothing more I can give to you or say to you, so what is the deal? Was there more stuff to examine in this crime scene? I don't believe so. Although, look at this one right here. What's this? This rope, is it? Yup, they laid it in the outline of the victim's body. Oh, they did? Oh, I didn't notice that. So he was just hanging out of the car? So wait, the victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. You have got to be the only person I know that would come to that conclusion. Interesting. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, something's written on it. 675, 12-2. You're right, let's see. Oh, 6, 7, S. I wouldn't have said S. 12-2. December 2nd. I don't know what 6, 7, S is. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Is today December 2nd? Shouldn't be. It's This is two months after the last trial with, uh... Edgeworth. So today, it would be February right now. Well, so, what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self, for deductive reasoning, go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Goodman's note. So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma. Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids? The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. It was yours. Oh, so she called you right after she committed the murder. At 518, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. detective is murdered and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. Ooh, to be continued. Oh, damn. 
done two episodes on this case. We have not even gotten to a trial yet. But that's okay, because we're going to keep doing it. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.